Oh, I think it was the, the fact that we were asking the question from an economics perspective. So this came out of a conversation I had with Asher Walensky, and we were talking about how people get power. And so the idea was the, to understand that when you took into account people's incentives and decisions in, in making relationships and how that ends up affecting other people. So it, it was a, you know, the people who've been studying networks for a long time, what we, we brought to the picture was the idea that, that um, there's costs and benefits associated with relationships and that the, you know, my choices in who I listen to and what I learn actually ends up affecting my friends and, and they get value from the more I learn. And so we tried to understand what that meant for network formation. And over the years, I think it's become clearer not just that an economic perspective on how networks form is important, but also there's lots of places in economics where networks matter. So trade networks, as we've seen, you know, disrupted supply chains matter, financial contagions, um, how people get jobs. So there's lots of applications that have economics importance and uh, economic importance as well. Um, homophily refers to the fact that people tend to associate with other people who are similar to themselves. So we see this you know, by age, by religion, by caste, um, by ethnicity, by language, um, by economic standing. People tend to be mixing with other people who are similar to themselves and they tend to be associating with people that are similar. And you know, that has good and bad effects. So on the one hand, it's easier to learn from, from people who are similar to, to oneself. So I, I, I learn more from somebody who has my same background when they try and undertake something. Um, so if a, if a kid is trying to decide whether they should go to university, um, somebody else who's very similar to themselves can give them good information about that. But at the same time, homophily, the fact that homophily um, divides our networks into different groups means that people in one group might not have any access to information that people in another group have. So um, the, the, the fact that, that your sources of information, your opportunities, your norms of behavior are all determined by those people around you um, mean that, that these splits in the network can relate, um, result in very different outcomes for different people in different parts of the network. Yeah, so there's, a, there's actually an amazing paper that was written by uh, Sir Francis Galton in 1907, and it was called Vox Populi, um, the voice of the people. And what he looked at was a setting where um, it was just a, a simple local fair where people were trying to guess how much an ox weighed. So everybody could look at the ox and then try and guess how much it weighed. And the actual weight of that ox was 1,197 pounds. Um, the average guess in the population was actually 1,198 pounds. So the, the, the population, there were about 780 some guesses. If you aggregated all those people, even though each one might be wrong, on average they were right. And so the question is, you know, in a society, um, how do we get that information aggregated? So maybe I have um, my opinion about something. I can talk to my friends. I, I can get their opinions and update. And if you keep doing that, so I did some uh, studies with Ben Golub where we looked at in the network, if I kept asking my friends what their guesses were and, and kept averaging those and so forth, you could lead, um, eventually get a very good guess. Um, so the network can aggregate things really well, but it, it takes a few things to be true. One is I can't be too overconfident in, in my own opinion. I have to listen to other people. Um, I have to listen to a broad set of people and, and the network has to be evenly balanced that way. And it also has to be that we don't in, intense, uh, um, in, intend to deceive other people. So we, we have to be truthful. And you know, all of those are problems, especially in modern social media where, where things can go wrong. Yeah, so, so for instance, um, most jobs are obtained through social contacts. So when, when you want to get uh, an interview somewhere, it helps to have somebody that you know work for that company. And it helps, in, you know, um, those kinds of contacts can be essential in, in being able to get your foot 
into the door and, and eventually get that interview and get a job. And so what that means is people end up with correlated outcomes. So if I have a lot of friends who are employed, it's easier for me to get a job. If I have a lot of friends who are unemployed, it's hard for me to get a job. And so what that does, when we put it together with the homophily we just talked about, is that different parts of the network can have very different outcomes in terms of one part being highly employed where another part is, is highly unemployed. And so what, you know, understanding that means that that gives us a different perspective on how to address um, inequality in, in wages, inequality in employment. We have to understand what the network structure is and how that's feeding into people's ability to get jobs. Yeah, so when we think about a, you know, a basic um, disease spreading, what is true is the more contacts I have, the more chance I have to catch it. And the more contacts I have, the more chance I have to spread it. Um, when you look at a financial network, there's, there's actually more forces at work than just this simple contact. Um, so think of a, of a bank and imagine that it has four partners. So if it's just working with four other partners, if one of those goes bankrupt, um, that could be a major disruption in the bank's business because it's a quarter of their business. If instead they're working with a hundred other banks, then if one of them goes bankrupt, that's only one percent of their business. So in that context, you know, working with more other uh, banks and having a denser network and a bigger network can actually be um, enhancing in terms of stability and help diversify things, whereas when you're talking about simple contagions, uh, that actually makes things worse. So, you know, financial contagions and understanding how they work requires a, a, a different kind of understanding of the network contagion and a different understanding of what banks' investments and exposures are um, to other banks. Yeah, so when we, when we start thinking about inequality and poverty, um, you know, a lot of the kinds of policies that people usually suggest are ones like redistribution. So, you know, we, we tax uh, the wealthier and, and give money to the poor. And that tends to address the symptoms that we have in inequality, but it doesn't necessarily address the root causes, like some of the things we talked about, for instance, you know, having unemployed friends and not being able to get a job, or um, not having information that I need to, to be able to get into university or to succeed in the university. So the, the basic network structure gives us different kinds of prescriptions. And understanding that homophily, understanding those network barriers and trying to overcome those it, um, is something that we can do to sort of have a long-term impact on inequality rather than just sort of addressing the shorter-term symptoms. Yeah, I mean, one, one thing that's true is as we've looked throughout history and economies have become more intertwined, that means that countries have less and less incentives to go to war to, with each other. Um, in, at present, the kinds of sanctions that are being put in on, on Russia um, and Belarus um, to cut off some of the banking opportunities that they have, to cut off the financial ties that they have, to cut off social ties where, where their population can be moving in and out of the country, those things can have an impact and, and cause great harm to them. And that kind of um, understanding is one that can change their incentives um, to, to you know, undertake a long, prolonged war. And so it's, you know, it, it's a modern tool that wasn't available when countries didn't trade, which is very different from um, you know, just moving an army in and trying to regain territory um, so solely through military purposes or military means.